Hello. I felt this video needed an introduction and a disclaimer. I'm recording this introduction at the end, but I'm placing it at the beginning so you can see it first. In many of the videos that I record and publish on YouTube, I can speak pretty authoritatively about the subject I'm discussing. I can show you exactly how to do something or how something works. This is not one of those videos. In this video, I'm learning as we're going, and I'm going to make some mistakes along the way. So I fully admit that up front, that this is not a subject that I am excessively familiar with. We're going to be learning together. I almost decided not to post this video because I did not accomplish anything. I probably made the problem worse. My little dog wants to come in here and join the party. And so I don't know how much value this has. I'll say that right up front. But maybe if you're interested in the same things I'm interested in and you're working on a similar project, maybe by seeing the mistakes I made, you can avoid making the same ones yourself. This was a, a, going to be a part one of multiple parts, I assume. I'll give you a hint right up front. I did not get this hard drive working. In this video, I'm trying to repair this three and a half inch Tandon MFM hard drive from a different computer. It's not from this one. This is just a, uh, a test bench. I did not get it working in this video. I probably made the problem worse, but here it is. Hello, in this video, I'm going to try to connect a Tandon TM362 hard drive and recover the data from it. This is a hard drive that I've used years ago in a different computer project. I haven't had it on in at least 10, probably 15 years. There isn't anything critical on this hard drive that I have to recover. I just want to recover the data for the fun of it and see if I can make this hard drive work again. This is out of an IBM PS2 computer, one of the integrated ones with the monitor and CPU all in one case. That PC no longer exists, but I did save the Tandon hard drive and a Western Digital Controller, which is in the back here. I've already installed it. I've been re resurrecting some old computers lately just for the fun of it. This particular computer is actually fairly modern for this hard drive. It's a Pentium 2, and I've got Windows 98 on it. Now that that matters because I am going to disable the onboard IDE controllers and just use this Western Digital Controller with this hard drive and see if we can get it to work. The hard drive is hooked up. Let's power it on and see what happens. The plate's spun up but I do not hear the stepper motor running. Now this computer may be too new for this hard drive and controller to work together properly. But before I go down that path, the first problem I see is that this is this is spinning. I can feel the gyroscopic effect to some extent. But when you first apply power to this drive, it should go through a startup routine where the plates spin up. There's a motor for the plates, and then the stepper motor will activate back and forth and move the heads back and forth across the plates. I do not hear that happening. So before we can worry about what computer to put this in, we need to figure out why that stepper motor isn't stepping. And I don't think that's a function of the computer. I'm pretty sure this hard drive does that startup sequence just with power applied. So the first thing I'll do is turn off the computer and unplug the hard drive from the controller and just make sure that the controller problem isn't preventing this from starting up. So now I just have power connected. I'll turn the computer back on. And the power supply is good in this computer. Everything in this computer works. I've been using it. Works well. I do have an older IBM 5160 that I need to resurrect in the near future. And if I can't get this hard drive and controller to work in this computer, I know it'll work just fine in the IBM 5160. But we still have no stepper motor action. So I think we have a mechanical problem. The reason I say that is because I can't even turn this... Not a lot of light on that. There we go. I can't even turn this shaft by hand. Now I'm not putting a lot of force, just with my fingers. 
I don't know if I should be able to turn it by hand, but it sure seems like it should turn freely by hand without much force. So I think we have a mechanical problem. I'm going to take this on the bench and have a closer look. There could be a couple of problems. The motor itself could be seized up or some part of the motor is seized or something in the head mechanism is frozen. First thing I'm going to try, this may not be proper procedure, but I'm going to just apply a little drop of oil right here around, around that shaft. I don't think having a cat on the workbench is proper ESD protocol. that oil work in and see if it does anything. I just put a drop. I know it was hard to see on camera and then the cat walking in front didn't help any. That's, that's pretty frozen. I'll let it sit for a couple of minutes and see what it does. I've already made a mistake. The oil isn't doing anything. The shaft is still frozen. And so I decided to see if I can loosen this stepper motor from the drive housing just enough to see if the problem is in the motor or in the, the whatever assembly moves the heads back and forth. So I loosened these two screws. These two screws go down inside of the body and then these two screws go through the body and have nuts on the back side. So I just loosened these two and now there's a rattle. I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but I've got an idea that there were nuts on the back side of some part of this housing that now we're just floating around inside. I was really hoping to avoid removing the cover off the top of this drive because this space is far from the clean room that would be necessary to work in this drive properly. So I did not want to open this up. If there was any valuable data on this drive, at this point I would stop and send it off to a professional. But hey, what the heck, let's just pop that cover and see what makes it tick. There's data that I wouldn't mind getting off from it just for the fun of it, but it is not valuable by any means. Looks like it has some clips around the outside edge and one in the front. So I think the first thing I'll do is take this front cover off so that I can get to the rest of the clips. There are still two clips I can't get to, one in here and one under here. I've had hard drives apart plenty of times, but I've never had one of these apart. Ooh, already I see a shard of metal in here. I don't know if I caused that or if that's part of an earlier fault. But I guess it's a good thing I took the cover off because that could do more damage than not. How well this shows up on camera. Oh yeah, there it is. Look at those shards of metal. This drive may have already had a catastrophic failure. By golly, there's the nut. One nut is still on the drive. One nut fell off. Well, that's no big deal. We can put those back on. But I'm going to pause the recording and analyze this very carefully and see what it takes to clean it. I very gently tried to whisk those metal shards out of this hard drive and I got most of them out, but a couple of them, I can't tell if they're stuck to the platters or if they're actually little gouges out of the platters. If those shards have been in there for any period of time when the drive was operating, it's possible that they've already done permanent damage to the discs. Which again, no big deal. We're just playing around here. I'm sure all the professionals are just screaming at me for everything I'm doing wrong with this hard drive. Taking the cover off, prying the cover off, uh, trying to whisk those shards out of there. But hey, this is an experiment. We can all learn something along the way. I also try to figure out where the shards came from, and it's not evident to me that anything is broke or uh, damaged in any way inside this drive. Oh, and I cleaned them off from the cover as best as I could. The cover's pretty clean now, too. 
It's possible that when I was getting in underneath that cover and prying it up, that I shaved off a little bit of metal. Or it's possible that it came off from the screw or the nut. I also found a washer inside, so the bolt goes through the case, and then there is a tiny little washer right there, and then on goes the nut. So I'll reassemble those pieces, that's no big deal. But while we have it open, let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with the stepper mechanism. You can see how this works. Make sure I get this on camera. So my light is shining on a little gear that's attached to the shaft of this motor. So this metal shaft right here goes through the motor like this. And that little gear then moves see that gold colored strip down in the very bottom with the teeth on it? That's attached to the head stack. So as a stepper motor moves that gold uh, uh, strip back and forth, it moves the heads in and out on the platters like this. Now on a modern hard drive, the heads pivot back in here and they flip back and forth across the platters like this. But in this, the heads move up and down, or in and out, depending on your point of view. So again, we need to figure out what's froze up. Is it the head, or is it the stepper motor? Okay, I found that I can move this head stack back and forth a very slight amount, just because there's a little bit of play between that gear and the head stack. Because I can move that back and forth, you can't see it on camera, but I can feel it. Because I can move that head back and forth, I know that the head is not froze up. It must be the stepper motor itself. So I actually ended up taking off the other nut and washer. So I want to pull the stepper motor out completely and see if we can repair it. But I pulled that nut and washer off because I want to put the cover back on this drive as soon as possible. Because I don't like having it open in a relatively dirty environment. By hard drive standards, my workshop is filthy. It's relatively clean in real life, but not to a hard drive. I'm not going to clip the clips all the way. I just want to put the cover on it like so. This hard drive is shock mounted, if you can see, if you want to call it that, or suspended with these rubber washers and these big screws. There's two on this side two on this side. I need to get this outer frame off because there are screw heads right there and there that I can't get to. So that's the next project. I have removed the four screws and washers. And I think this outer frame will just slide off. Or do I have to take the circuit board off too? This board has a connector right here for the little LED light on the front panel. And then it has what looks like a ribbon cable going to a connector right here to see if that can come off. Or I might be able to just hinge this up out of the way, I'm not sure. And it has a connector right here, it looks like. If I could just move this enough to get to these screws, that's all I'm asking for. I really want to separate this connector right here because it looks like it could be damaged pretty easily. There's a flat flex cable. I called it a ribbon cable earlier. It's actually a flat flex cable on this connector. And those are pretty fragile. So I'm just going to apply force to the connector like that. And then, if we open it up, now theoretically, the stepper motor should pop off. Like that. Make sure those surfaces are clean. That looks good. Again, I'm not sure if this is supposed to move by hand or not. I'm sure someone's yelling at me right now telling me, no, don't touch it. But it just seems to me like I ought to be able to move this by hand. I'm not aware that it has any kind of a break inside that has to be released. There we go. It's moving a little bit now. Just with hand pressure, 
There's a little bit of oil. I guess from this end when I was touching that. Yeah, now just working it back and forth by hand. Now it's starting to get to become free. There we go. And for good measure, I'll put a little bit of oil on this side too. Or should I? This goes right into the hard drive. Should that have oil? Maybe not. Maybe that's not a good idea. Still feels stiff. Of course, this probably has a permanent magnet in it. It may feel stiff to some extent. But I've felt enough stepper motors to know that usually you can feel like individual little detents in a stepper motor. And I can kind of feel that with this one. But boy, it just seems like it's still a little bit too stiff. Oh, there's an O-ring. We'll save that. I'll work it back and forth a bit and come back in a few minutes. Okay, with some more oil and some more patience, this moves pretty well now. You can't really just spin it like an induction motor. It still has some drag, but I think that's to be expected with a stepper motor. I felt bad on others that, that are working properly. Still, all in all, I've only put about six or seven drops on this bearing up here. I don't feel too bad about that. You can do a lot of damage by over-oiling a motor. I'm going to leave it right there. This is accessible even once the hard drive is, is assembled, so I'm not too worried if I have to go back and add more oil. That's no big deal. Let's reassemble this. It's probably better if you're doing this on your own to take these clips out entirely. They're just stuck to the, the label on top. They're not actually attached to the lid. I did notice that this head stick has some play in it. So it's probably better if you do this on your own to somehow hold these heads in place when you take the motor out because what I'm doing here is probably not good for them. So I'm just holding the heads down and pushing this into place. Well, it's back together. Covers on it. Board is installed. Nuts are tight. Everything I took out, I put back in. Everything I disconnected, I reconnected. Front panel's back on. The LED is hooked up. I think if you find that you have this problem, I would just get more aggressive with trying to turn this shaft because now I can turn it by hand quite easily. I think I could have saved a whole lot of hassle and done less damage if I would have just put some oil on that shaft and a pair of pliers and just brute forced it back and forth until it moved. Uh, right now the head is fully retracted in this position. It's as far to the outside of the disc as possible so I assume that is the park position. The way that gear is set up, to move the head in, you turn this clockwise. So if you have this problem, try taking a pair of pliers, pinch in here, and try to turn that shaft clock counterclockwise, excuse me, counterclockwise. I think, assuming that's the park position, that's at a physical stop. So you want to turn it counterclockwise like this. Well, after breaking all the rules and doing everything you are not supposed to do to a hard drive, you think this thing has any chance of working? Let's hook it up and find out. The hard drive is reconnected. I do not believe this hard drive is bootable. I don't think I had a bootable operating system on it. So I have a DOS boot disk in the floppy drive of this computer. We'll power it up and see what happens. I mean, you may not be able to hear the stepper motor, but I can definitely hear it running. It didn't quite sound like it normally sounds, but it has been 
10 to 15 years since I've had this drive running. So we may still have a problem, but we'll see what happens. Press the key to reboot. Okay. That's not a good sign. But again, this controller may not be compatible with, with this computer. I may need to dig out my IBM 5160 XT and see if that works any better. It won't detect these hard drives because these are IDE hard drives and I have disabled the IDE controllers in the PC BIOS. Well, after a few more retries and setting adjustments, no luck. And I can tell by the way this hard drive is starting up that it it's not finding the tracks. I've listened to this drive start up enough times when it was working, I know what it's supposed to sound like and what it's supposed to do. I'll turn it on here and give you a close-up of that shaft. So watch this shaft right here. And listen to the sounds that it makes. It's kind of neat to watch, but it's not working. That startup sequence is taking way too long. And each time that stepper motor advances one big notch, for lack of a better term, then it's doing three or four more little steps trying to find the track and it's not finding it. So I think either the hard drive is just too far gone or I've done too much damage to it taking it apart. But just to make sure it's not a computer issue, I will get up my 5160 and hook this up and see what it does. I still think that Tandon hard drive has more mechanical problems that we haven't solved, but just to be sure, I dug out my IBM 5160 PC XT. This computer has some problems of its own, but last time I used it, which was probably five years ago, the basic system was functioning. Monitor, power supply, motherboard were, were working. This computer has some hard drive problems that will work out, but for now, we don't have to worry about those. As long as I can get the floppy drive to work, that's all I need. The keyboard has some problems. Some of the keys, you really have to pound on them to get them to work, and I think some of the keys don't work at all. But it's the only XT keyboard that I have. I don't have the original keyboard for this, so we'll make do. First thing I'm going to do is open the computer up and minimize the system. In other words, I'll disconnect the hard drive, hard drive controller, and I just packed this thing full of cards last time I used it because I had plans to see what I could get to work and what I couldn't. So I'm going to pull a lot of that extra, those extra parts out and just minimize the system so we hook up the Tandon hard drive and its matching controller and see what happens. Here are some of the cards I pulled out of this computer. First of all, the original Async card. Here is a 8-bit modem, which is kind of cool because it is slot 8 compatible. It has a jumper for slot 8. Kind of neat. This is a memory expansion board, a quad board. This is a sick puppy, unfortunately. It had a little memory backup battery right here, and it corroded all the traces on the board in this vicinity. I've tried to repair some of the traces with some bodge wires. I did that a few years ago. Uh, it needs more help than that. And it may be a goner. But I pulled that out because it doesn't work anyways. Here's the Western Digital Hard Drive controller for this computer and, and its hard drive, which we don't need right now. This is a big honk and looks like a network card. I don't know if all these cards were in the machine when I got it or if I found them someplace and just stuffed them in there because they fit. But we don't need any of those cards right now to do this test. So I just have the video controller. This is a monochrome display adapter. Floppy controller. Floppy drive is hooked up. Hard drive is unhooked. 
and the monitor is plugged in. So we're going to go for a first power up. See if it flies or if it fries. We have picture. This monitor has some kind of a screen on the front. I don't know what this is supposed to be. It's a very fine plastic mesh. It's got a black side and a white side. I guess that's just a glare reducer. It's not a privacy screen. Fit that back in. All right. What did uh, IBM PC Basic? So that's a good sign. I'm going to find a boot floppy and see if I can boot to a floppy disk next. I've tried some different disks and I can't seem to get any of them to boot. And it doesn't sound like the floppy's heads are moving. So I'm wondering if the stepper motor in this floppy drive is seized up, kind of like on the hard drive. So not going to worry about that right now. I want to hook up the hard drive controller and the hard drive we're working on and see what happens. Here we go with the new Tannen hard drive. Before I turn it on, I'll talk a little bit. This is not going to boot to the hard drive because this is not a, it doesn't have a bootable operating system on it. But I just want to see if we get any error codes and I want to listen to how this drive starts up. So I'm going to put my microphone right up next to the hard drive before I turn the power switch on so you can hear what it sounds like. Someone has a video on YouTube of what this hard drive is supposed to sound like. I'll link it in down below. Let's take a listen to that and compare that video of a good hard drive to what you just heard with this hard drive. And this hard drive, when it was working, it sounded exactly like the one in the video that's linked in down below. Let's look at the screen and see what we have. We have a 1701 error. Let's look that up and see what it is. Looks like error 1701 can be a lot of things. Um, one of which is that the hard drive needs to be low level formatted, which is quite possible after doing major surgery on it, we might need to start over by low level formatting it. Of course, that would eliminate any chance of recovering the data that's on it, but that's not a big deal. Again, we're just playing around with this. So before I can do that, we need to get the floppy drive working. I was hoping to not have to put one project on hold to work on a different one, but that's what we need to do. So I'm going to end the video right here. Sorry to leave you guys on a cliffhanger.